Hey everybody, it's Ornloop back with another AoE4 Civilization Rundown Tech Tree Guide thing. So again, in case you missed the first video on the English, all eight civilizations in Age of Empires 4 are pretty different from one another, especially compared to Age of Empires 2. So what I'm just going to do in these videos is run through the tech trees, go over all of the civilization bonuses, their landmarks, unique units, and do my best to compare them to like generic units or techs or whatever when possible. Uh, as a lot of this isn't necessarily the most intuitive, and again, last time we did the English, one of the simplest civilizations in the game, and now we're going to go to one of the most complicated civs in the game, the Chinese. So let's do that. They are, as you can see, a three-star difficulty hard civilization. But yes, this is the Chinese, based off of, you know, China, medieval China, last name from 907 to 1644 CE, and uh, unlike with the English, these dates actually make sense to me because 907 was the end of the Tang Dynasty, which is your Dark Age Dynasty. Actually, wouldn't the start of the Tang Dynasty make the most sense? Anyway, uh, it ends at 1644, which is the end of the Ming Dynasty, which is the last one, which again, I will get to later. Now, unfortunately, with Chinese, for being such a complicated civilization, uh, <laughs> there really isn't a lot of great description right here. So I am going to do my best to go through all of these, you know, intricacies with the civilization and still be brief in my explanations, which, uh, well, we'll see how that goes. First, I just realized their, uni their unique units are listed before their civilization bonuses, and at least with the English... Yeah, they listed their <laughs> their civilization bonuses and then influence and then their unique unit. Whereas with the Chinese, they don't do that at all. So that's already kind of awkward. Anyway, in an attempt to be more consistent than the game itself, let's start with the civ bonuses. First, we have something that's nice and straightforward. Villagers construct defenses 50% faster and all other buildings 100% faster. So defenses, talking about walls, keeps, uh, outposts, towers, uh, town centers as well. All that's going to be 50% faster, um, and then all other buildings is, well, all other buildings, and they're going to be 100% faster. So this saves you villager time, essentially, and also is really important in helping with timings, and those are going to be uh, quite important to be hitting with Chinese, as we will see, uh, especially when it comes to rushing. Next, we have entered a dynasty by building both landmarks from an age, providing access to a special to special bonuses. I'll get to this in a second. Let me get back to that. Chemistry technology is granted for free when advancing to the Imperial Age, which is Age 4, of course. And let me show you guys real quick. Chemistry, it is available to all civilizations. And it increases the damage of gunpowder units by plus 20%, which is quite good. Notably, um, again, for people who are familiar with AoE 2, chemistry is not a prerequisite to create gunpowder units, but is instead just a bonus to them. And uh, of course, Chinese get it for free, which is nice. And then their naval bonus is docks work 20% faster. Pretty straightforward, nice and helpful in churning out lots of ships on water maps. The most important thing to understand with Chinese, and why I guess they would be considered a, you know, a hard civilization, is that, and you know, why the dynasties are listed as like the first thing here, Chinese advance through all four ages like a regular civ. You go, you start in the Dark Age and then go to Feudal Age, Castle Age, and Imperial Age. However, Independent of your advancement in age, you also have dynasties, which can be uh, noted by the giant button that says your dynasty that's in like the top center of your screen, which you can never ever get rid of as hard as you might want to. Uh, hopefully they'll patch that out. Anyway, I suppose to mirror the four ages, you also have your four dynasties. You start with the Tang Dynasty, and then can go to the Song Dynasty, Yun Dynasty, and Ming Dynasty, which historically was the four main dynasties of this era. There were a bunch of other ones, but that's for something else. Now, as you can see on screen, each dynasty provides you some sort of unique bonus, as well as specific unique units, and has its own special prerequisites. So, starting with the Tang Dynasty, you begin the game with your scouts getting plus 30% line of sight, which is a nice little Dark Age, you know, boost to your scouting. Now, to advance to the Feudal Age, you need to construct a landmark, like most civilizations. So you advance to the Feudal Age by building either the Imperial Academy or the Barbican of the Sun. I'll talk more about those in depth in a little bit. But once you build one of them, you get to the Feudal Age. However, even when you're in the Feudal Age, unlike every other Civ in the game, you can go back and for the same price as Feudal Age, build the other one. And once you build that second landmark from, you know, Age 2 or whatever, you'll advance from the Tang Dynasty to the Song Dynasty. Now, when you get to the Song Dynasty, 
you will get your uh, villager production time reduced by minus 35%, which is, you know, a really strong economic boost. You can churn out those villagers faster than even uh, French can, which uh, will be in the next video. Also, it enables the creation of the Juge Nu unique unit, which is literally the Chuko Nu, just a different spelling of it. And it also allows you to build the village building, which is a unique building for the civilization. I know this is complicated, but please just bear with me. Now, here's where things get even more complicated. Say you want to go to the next stage. You want to go to the castle age. And then to do that, you build either the, your astronomical clock tower or your imperial palace. You'll then get to the castle age and then get everything associated with getting to castle age. However, you will not be to the Yon Dynasty until you build that second feudal age, or second next castle age landmark, at which point you will switch from the Song Dynasty to the Yon Dynasty. Once you do that, and I guess I should have said this earlier, you lose the bonuses from the previous dynasty. So when you go from the Tang Dynasty to the Song Dynasty, you lose your, you know, extra scout line of sight, but at that point it doesn't really matter. When you go from the uh, Song Dynasty to the Yon Dynasty, you then lose that extra villager production speed. But instead, villagers, officials, and military units move 15% faster, so you get a different bonus. Also, you lose the ability to create your Song Dynasty unique units and buildings. So for example, you can see here, you can get the Juke Nu, Chuko Nu, in the Feudal Age only after you research the Song Dynasty, but if then you go to the Yon Dynasty, you can't make Juke Nu anymore. You can make different unique units in a different unique building, but the Juke Nu are then blocked from you. Now, you can, the, the ones that you have on the field, they'll still be there, same with your villages, but you'll no longer be able to produce more of them until later. But then, you know, you get to the Yon Dynasty, and then you'll get your faster moving units, and then you'll also gain access to the Fire Lancer Cavalry unit. Uh, again, once you build both of those Castle Age landmarks, which I will talk more about in just a little bit. And then lastly, you have the Imperial Age, which you can get to with building one of the Imperial Age landmarks. And then if you want to get to the Ming Dynasty, the final dynasty, then you'll have to build both of them. And already, I just want to point out the Spirit Way landmark which allows you to build everything you can from previous dynasties. So although you know you might have certain units or buildings locked to you because you advanced too far, this one lets you go back and get all of them anyway, and you can get all of their upgrades and whatnot. Also, your military units gain plus 10% health, which is probably just your best all-around late-game bonus. So that's the dynasty mechanic. You can see why this is just... It, it's a pretty complicated civilization. Now, with the dynasty mechanics in mind, let's very briefly go through the unique units. There are a lot of them with the civilization, so I'm gonna again try and be brief. So first, we have a unit that's not even listed here for some reason, and that is the Imperial Official. Yeah. So this is a worker unit that you can create in the Dark Age, but you can only make four of them by default. They're 150 food, and what they do is... Oh wait, it doesn't even talk about the influence mechanic anywhere over here. Okay, so I, I should explain both of these things. So, Imperial officials can't fight. What they do is you can task them to a specific building, and kind of like the Pharaoh in Age of Mythology, you can empower that building. If, if you have them supervise a lumber camp, villagers will get 20% more wood. So if they bring back 10 wood, they would instead get 12 wood. So you can boost your economy that way. The other thing that officials can do is you can just leave them to their own devices and they will gather tax from buildings. And if you build buildings close to each other, they will generate more tax, and especially uh, with one of the dynasties, which is, or not dynasties, the <laughs> landmarks, which is imp the Imperial Academy, that one will get even more tax gold. So that's their influence mechanic, and that's the Imperial Official, a unit that's not even listed as a unique unit for some reason, but still gonna be an important part of your gameplay as Chinese, and you can build these guys from Dark Age regardless of your dynasty. Next, we're going to go to the Chuko Nu, Juge Nu, whatever you would like to call them. And this does require the Song Dynasty, like I said. So you need to get both Feudal Age landmarks. And you can you can you have to stop making them once you get to the Yon Dynasty when you build both Castle Age landmarks. So you can only get these in like early to mid game and then in post imp with Spirit Way. Now I'll put the comparison stats on uh, on the screen. Hopefully this time I'll remember to actually do that in the editing, but Compared to the Archer, which is its natural analog, um, they are more expensive. They cost 60 food, 30 wood, and 30 gold. So unlike literally every unit in AoE 2, they cost 3 resources. 
whereas archers are only 30 food and 50 wood. Now, what are you getting in exchange for that? As you can hopefully see on your screen, you'll see that the Shuganu has more HP. Actually, it only has 90 HP by default. I took the screenshot when I was in the uh, Ming Dynasty, so it had extra HP. But still, it has 90 HP to 70. It does more damage because you can look at those, like, three volleys of four damage as 12 damage, essentially, versus just the five damage of the Archer. And they attack faster, but the flip side is that they move slower and have a slightly shorter range. So you're looking at a more powerful, more expensive but shorter range, less maneuverable archer unit. And note that you can still build regular archers alongside Jukanu or instead of. Next, looking to another unique unit that is not listed here for some reason, we have the Palace Guard, which is something that you don't need a dynasty for, like any specific dynasty rather. You can just build them once you hit Castle Age, and they are your equivalent to the Men at Arms. So right off the bat, uh, they cost the exact same as your basic men-at-arms. And if you look at the side-by-side -side stats again, you will see that they move a lot faster to the palace guards for Chinese. But on the flip side, they have less armor. They have the same HP, they have the same exact attack, but they have 3-3 three, three armor as opposed to 4-4 four, four armor. Still, considering that movement speed is usually the biggest weakness of infantry, I would say that you're definitely looking at a unit that's an upgrade over your basic uh, swordsman unit. So well, this guy will actually likely be a fairly core part of your army as the game goes on. Next, moving on to the stable, we have the Fire Lancer, where you need to be specifically in the Yun Dynasty, or in Post Imp with Spirit Way. And although you can kind of compare it to the Knight, or Lancer, I guess, as they call them for Chinese, they're really... They're kind of different things. They're not like regular light horsemen, because they're more expensive. They do cost gold. 80 food, 20 wood, 20 gold, so they cost three resources, like the Chukonu. But I'll, I'll put the comparison on screen once again. Again, just note that the Fire Lancer has 10% more HP, because I took all these screenshots in the Ming Dynasty like a noob. But compared to the Knight, it moves slower, it has no armor, it has less HP, and it ostensibly it also does less damage. So you're thinking, okay, what the heck? does this thing do? Well, the charge attack deals area damage because it has an explosive tipped lance. So like when you, you know, send these guys into battle, it does a little bit of um, area damage. Now, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure exactly how this works out. Unfortunately, in AoE 4, we don't have a scenario editor, so I can't really test all this stuff out too effectively. But it's really good at destroying buildings and siege engines, I guess. But I've really noticed that in practice, these guys nuke buildings, so you got to be careful with these guys. They're not your basic combat unit like the Lancer, but they they will do a lot of damage if you're not prepared. You can kind of think of them as like an unarmored Tarkin almost from AoE 2. All right, side note, I actually forgot about the villages and uh, the granaries because literally there's so much going on with this Civ. Okay, so the village you can get with the Song Dynasty, and it increases your pop space by 40 and can garrison, uh, I believe, 10 units. And it's just like a big chonky house. Um, you probably don't need to worry about them too much, but uh, that, that is what the village does. Then in Castle Age, you have the Yun Dynasty uh, building, which is the granary, which is like a super mill, where it's if you drop off food at this building, uh, the... It improves the farm rate by 15%. It's kind of like the English, and it stacks with other granaries. And it also generates tax each time a resource is dropped off, which, again, like, this is all very, very complicated. But uh, those are the unique buildings. Yeah, I, I almost forgot about them because they're not listed here on the tech tree at all. Anyway, next we have the fan favorite unit, the Nicholas Cage, not the bees! And it is going to be your replacement to the mangonel. Uh, Chinese don't have mangonels, they have the nest of bees. And if you compare the unit stats side by side, again, I screwed up with the, the HP. Normally, the nest of bees has 240 HP, same as a mangonel. Uh, one of the landmarks actually boosts that. Um, uh, this guy, which I'll get to in a little bit. So normally, 240 HP, base, same exact armor, 8 versus ranged. Even slower movements moving the Mangonel. Like, these are literally some of the slowest units in the entire game. But if you look at that attack, it's pretty wild. Instead of 12 times 3 damage, essentially, for uh, 36, you're looking at 8 times 8, which I know I'm bad at math, but that should be 64. 
Now it is a slightly slower range, but it also has a, a higher attack speed. So kind of like the Chukonu versus Archer, you're looking at a unit that does a lot of damage, but at, you know, the cost of less range and slower movement speed. Also, Mangonels are 400 wood, 200 gold. These guys are 300, 300. So same total resources, just more of an emphasis on gold. All right, last unique unit here for Chinese. We have the Grenadier, which as far as I can tell, doesn't really have uh, an analog, I guess, in a generic army. So you need the Ming Dynasty for it. So you literally need every single landmark. And they cost 120 food, 60 wood, and 60 gold. So they're pretty expensive. And if you look at their stats, again, it's 150 HP normally, but they have a slow movement speed, okay-ish attack speed, short range, and then a grenade that does 18 damage. Well, as you can imagine, as they are a grenadier, it will do damage in a blast radius, which means that if you are up against a bunch of clumped up enemy units, whether those be infantry or archers or anything like that, they will be doing a lot of damage. Personally, I haven't seen a ton of these guys in action just yet, but at least in theory, they should be pretty good against clumped up units, but again, a super late game option. Anyway, those are, I believe, all of the Chinese unique units. This is going to be a really long video anyway, so let's just try and breeze through these uh, landmarks. Uh, as I've already seen, um, lots of people are doing uh, videos on landmarks, so I'm sure there is other stuff that you can guys hear about these in a lot of detail. Feudal Age, you have the Imperial Academy to get extra tax gold, so you can get more gold from your Imperial uh, officials. It has a, a few tiles radius, so, you know, it's just build your buildings nearby. Uh, the Barbican of the Sun is essentially like a mini castle, and uh, it's just a nice defensive structure, essentially. It's a, it's a nice place that you can either uh, hold on in early game, or you can use to push forward uh, with, like, a, a rush. Castle Age, you have the Astronomical Clock Tower, which is a siege workshop that... Everything produced from it gets plus 50% health, which is pretty nice, which is why you saw that Nest of Bees have a ton of HP earlier. Then you have the Imperial Palace, which it has a big line of sight, and you can look at the location of enemy villagers for 10 seconds with an activated ability, and you can just use that to, uh, you know, look at, okay, where is my enemy, uh, you know, gathering eco? Are they having villagers on, like, the side of the map? And then you can raid them uh, as you want. Personally, I don't think it's, like, that great, but who knows? Maybe it'll prove to be even better. Imperial Age, I already talked about the Spirit Way. Um, also, if you produce units nearby, the they cost 30% less, so that's another bonus. And you can be, get everything from your previous dynasties. Lastly, you have the Great Wall Gatehouse, which you need to make over a stone wall, and it increases the health of stone walls and gates by plus 100%, and it, your troops that are on top will deal more damage. So those are your landmarks super speed mode. Lastly, Unique Tax. First, we have Battle Hardened, uh, which you don't need a specific dynasty for, and it will give your palace guards an extra 30 HP. So just a nice little buff late game to your uh, your main sort of uh, frontline unit, your uh, palace guard. At the Imperial Academy, the Feudal Age landmark, you can get Imperial Examinations, which uh, increases the maximum amount of gold carried by Imperial officials. So just more gold income from those guys. Oh, I just realized you can see the village in like if you click on Song Dynasty here. Ah, my bad. It is in the tech tree. My apologies. Okay, at the keep, your uh, castle equivalent, you'll have extra materials, which stone walls and towers uh, and outposts repair nearby damaged stone walls, so you can actually automatically sort of heal yourself up over time uh, with your defenses. So Chinese, obviously, lots of uh, defensive bonuses. Chinese do have really good siege, as you can imagine, so they have actually a few uh, unique techs at the siege workshop, all in Imperial Age. You have reload drills to make your bombard cannons fire faster. Reusable barrels, which uh, makes your nests of bees cheaper. And pyrotechnics, which increases the range of your gunpowder units, which is really handy. So all of these are going to be really nice late game techs for your Chinese uh, army. And lastly, super lastly, the Chinese wonder is the Enclave of the Emperor. Whew. Yeah, that was a lot to cover in one short little video. Uh, it's probably not too short. But that is the Chinese in a nutshell. There is so much going on with this Civ, and I know I didn't really explain it all that well, but I did the best I could. And I would recommend, you know, be willing to give this Civ a few games. Don't, you know, you, you start playing it and then you feel like you're lost and then you don't want to play it anymore. Just try it a few times. There's so many different options and strategies possible with the Chinese. They can do a lot of different things. It says they focus on dynasties, gunpowder, and expansion. Um, they do have an incredibly strong late game with both, you know, your gunpowder units, you have your uh, palace guard swordsmen, 
your Fire Lancer Raiders. Like, there's just so much going on with the Civ. It'll take a while to figure out, I'm sure, but definitely give it a shot if it is something that you think you would find uh, enjoyable. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like if you did, and I'll see you all next time.